Welcome back to the HS Arena Invitational with me, your host, Calum Leslie, and Firebat and Sottle. We're into our semi-finals now, just four players remaining from a field of 32 that we started with on Friday. We're down to the uh, the very nitty-gritty of it. Our first semi-final coming up is going to be Zalay versus 6 -0. Firebat, this is a really interesting matchup from your perspective, I bet. A former teammate versus a current teammate, two players you know very well. Yeah, it's definitely kind of interesting to see them clash here. Uh, Zixo just coming off the back of a tournament win, so he's definitely got a lot of uh, wind in his sails, so to speak. And uh, Zelay, no slouch himself, he's definitely a strong player. I really can't say either one way or another which player is favored here. They're both extremely strong players. Well, I mean, it seems like uh, getting dropped from Arkham might be the best thing that ever happened to Sixo, because he's been on a tear ever since. Yeah, I guess... Uh, I mean, that's sometimes what happens when players shift teams or get dropped from a team. They get a lot of motivation to work a lot harder because it's sort of like an awakening. When uh, you switch teams or are removed from a team, you're like, well, maybe I should pick it up a little bit and keep focusing harder. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy to see him do well, really proud of him. He's a friend of mine, not only a team ex-teammate, but definitely a friend. And i just really happy seeing him put up good results. Yeah, he's really been killing it recently, Saul. We saw him in the Esports Arena uh, Invitational Tournament as well, uh, won a couple of online tournaments. He's really been on a tear in the last couple of months. He has been, yeah. Um, but you have to say, like, a, a decent amount of that was because of the strength of Patron. He was certainly one of the best Grim Patron players in the world. He's done his as much as he can to, like, adapt Grim Patron. He's, one of the, he's the only player in this tournament that's kept <laughs> faith with that card. With it still being in his deck in a more mid range focused style. But, you know, 6 0 is a strong enough, a versatile enough player. He wasn't just a one trick pony. Like, he will adapt to whatever the meta is and he will figure out the best decks and he will learn to play them, um, you know, as well or better than anyone else. That's just what he does. So, no surprise to see him going deep in another tournament here. Yeah, we saw a very different warrior archetype from Zalay yesterday as well, the Fatigue Warrior. Uh, and in fact, both players looking at those two warrior archetypes and thinking, I don't want a piece of that. So yeah. both the Warriors have been banned out here. So it's going to be the Druid, Paladin, and Hunter of Zalay versus the Druid, Paladin, and Hunter of Six. So I don't think we saw on stream any of Zalay's other decks apart from the... Uh, uh, we saw the, pa the Paladin earlier, wait, wait, right? Six O has Mage. Six O, yeah, sorry. Mage, Hunter, Druid for Six O, Druid, Paladin, Hunter for Zalay. Yep. I'm just thinking of what we've seen of uh, of Zoe's decks. We, yeah, we saw all of his decks earlier against uh, Yagu. He came into today having concealed everything except his warrior deck. Uh, Sixer, we know, is playing the Freeze Mage, the Face Hunter, and the Aggro Druid. Yeah, pretty popular lineup um, back in the day when Last Hero form, uh, standing was the format. You know, two aggro decks plus Freeze Mage was a, a standard that a lot of people went for, something that um, Firebat, you yourself, tend to favor. Mm -hmm. Like, what's what's the thinking behind that lineup? What's the overall strategy? Well, that was something I kind of did more in Conquest than in last year's standing, just because oh, those you're decks right. yeah, kind of... Oh, you're right, yeah, my mistake, my mistake. Yeah, yeah, those decks kind of target the same thing, so like Face Hunter and Freeze Mage both have really good matchups against things like Paladin, like things Zoo, those sort of things, but uh, he brings them both here. I feel like he brings those two decks so that he has two counters to Paladin and two counters to maybe Warlock Zoo, two counters to a bunch of things, so that if one of those two classes get banned out for him, he still has a counter remaining for that, so that he's not forced into a situation where he has to ban Paladin or some other aggressive deck. Yeah, so both bringing the Druid and the Hunter, but I think it's probably different versions of Druid, uh, and possibly even different versions of Hunter. I don't know if, mm -hmm. if what version of Hunter was it that Zalay was playing? Uh, he's playing the very heavy mid-range version. Yeah. So like Hunter's Mark Sludge Belchers in there. Yes, and then, that's right. Yeah, he's got the the more standard traditional Druid list. No, uh, no Fell Reavers, none of that stuff in there. So it's going to be, even though some of the classes are similar, they have very different archetypes of them. Yeah, we saw Zelay's whole lineup has really kind of shifted towards, the, he's taken those standard archetypes and really shifted them towards uh, more mid-range and control within themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the Hunter and obviously the Fatigue Warrior is like the ultimate control warrior, right? Yeah. And then even with his Paladin list is a more controlling version of the mid-range Paladin. But what's not mid-range is the Face Hunter of Sixo that he's going to be starting with against the mid-range Druid for Zelay. Yeah, Zelay's lineup is all sort of uh, slower control decks than their normal control archetype. So it seems like he's trying to go a little bit slower than everybody else's control decks, and it might not work out for him, these tech choices against Zixo's lineup, who has an extremely fast and aggressive lineup. And we can see that just looking at Zixo's starting hand, how fast his lineup really is. 
yeah, I think that's definitely a valid strategy. If you if you know, if you make the read that you're going to come up against a slow meta, um, a control deck trying to win a matchup against a slower control deck is one of the hardest things to do in Hearthstone, just because mm -hmm. they outlast you, they have oh, more threats than you, they have more end game than you. But as you said, by putting all those extra greedy things in your deck, you are exposed to uh, things like War Worgen Infiltrator and Lepanome and Wolfrider. So. Yeah, it's looking pretty dicey here for Zelay. He doesn't pick up any of the, the things you really want as Druid. No Wild Growth, no Aspirant, no Innervate quite yet. And this Knife Juggler is going to be able to come down, and Zelay currently doesn't have any answer for it. How terrifying is that? It's pretty damn terrifying. Uh, knife Juggler is one of the highest priority kill minions in the entire game. Just because it represents so much damage if it gets down on turn 2 unanswered, but this Knife Juggler won't be unanswered, because... Uh, yeah. Zelay's deck decides to give him a break for one turn, allows him to draw the Wrath to take down this Knife Juggler, but there is still a lot of damage coming his way next turn. Yeah, most definitely. He has the Keeper next turn to try and help slow it down a little bit. One of the better four, four mana minions from Druid for dealing with aggressive things. But Zixo's just got so much firepower in the back end of this. Yeah, so much damage. Yeah, Zixo's just going to be too wide on the board here. You know, he's going to take eight damage this turn, and even if the Keeper comes down, there's still another four damage left on the board, plus the hero power for it is six more. You, you can't afford to be taking oh. this much damage this consistently against yeah. a Hunter. Yeah, that Wild Growth joins the hand just a few turns too late for Zelay, just sort of taunting him now. <laughs> that can't be feeling too good. Yeah, well, it's absolutely. a little clunky there by Zixo as he pulls another trap from this deck. He would have really liked to see a charger there, but Snake Trap can get a lot of value here as Zelay tries to make some trades. Yeah, Charge Minion or probably Glaive Zuka were his best draws that turn. Glaive Zuka would have let him fit the hero power in as well, pushed a ton of damage, but he can just snowball off the start he has here. He has the kill command stocked up in hand already. He has the explosive trap for two more damage at some point. And uh, he has to safe in the read last turn that there was no swipe from his opponent. He can play the snake trap, get even more power generated on the board. And this is, he's just getting, Zelay is just getting absolutely run over here by this face mm -hmm. hunter. Yeah, Zelay's at 14 health currently. There's a Lepernome on the field, which is going to knock that health down to 12. And Unleash the Snakes has come out. <laughs> All of the... Really just absolutely terrifying to try and deal with. He's got the hero power of the Lepernome as well, which is one extra face damage. After yeah. the armor gain, takes two from the death rattle, animal companion comes down. We all know that there's no way this is a Misha. This, this is adding some damage to the board. Leok mm -hmm. or Huffer all day here. Yeah, Zixo just one damage off lethal here. Gonna roll the Animal Companion, and that's gonna add three more damage. Kill command to try and close out the game next turn. Ouch. <laughs> he even paused for a second. He's giving brief consideration to trading with the 2 2, but no. Smoke life it is. Yeah. It's turn six, like, you do have no reason to respect Druid's minions quite yet. Nope. As uh, not even, like, a double innervate combo would kill him. So. Wow. This is just a spiteful Savage Roar from Zelay. It's like, oh, screw you, buddy. Like, I'm going to deal some backswing damage. I know I've lost, but... Oh, oh. And then uh, Zixo kill commanding himself in the face for a little bit of BM there. I like Ooh. it. Finishes off with a hero power and just an absolute steamroll of a game for game one for Zixo. Very, very quick one. Yeah. Not a good start for Zelay going into the face hunter there, but uh, that is the power of face hunter. If it does draw well, if it isn't answered properly uh, in the early game from the opposing deck, it, it could just run you over, Soul. Mm -hmm. It can, and that's exactly what we saw. You know, Druid really doesn't have to get the right cards to line up against it early. You, know, you need your Wrath, which he was lucky enough to draw in, or you know that game probably went ended like two turns sooner if that Wrath didn't come off the top. But he didn't get uh, he didn't get enough ramp early. He didn't get the Aspirant. He didn't get to accelerate a quick Keeper onto the board. The Keeper was too slow by the time it came down, and yeah, just just ruined him with, uh, with constant aggression from the Hunter. We have the uh, the Zombie Secrets from Zelay and the very mid range Hunter deck. Are either of these a good option against? face hunter or is is he really up against it here yeah he's really pinned up against the wall here this is definitely not the greatest deck for dealing with face hunter like you have the zombie chows you have some of these uh, anti-aggression techs in there but at the same time at the end of the day usually face hunter can just outrace you and kill you before you can really start doing what your deck's designed to do which is get that mysterious challenger down and if your opponent keeps drawing Worgen Infiltrator into things that buff Worgen Infiltrator, you're probably going to have a bad time no matter what you're playing. Mm -hmm. He does have the Hunter Creeper here, one of the, the best minions against sort of aggressive decks for just cleaning up things early. 
But uh, no follow-up to it just yet. He's going to be relying to try and find something off the top of his deck, but he just really needs to get it out there, get the tempo on the field as soon as possible. Oh, the Owl. The Owl top deck is pretty huge. Good enough for him to pass down the Glaive Zooka, which would have let him do uh, five damage that turn, but the Owl to remove the long-term value of the Horny Creeper, just mm -hmm. way too important. Yeah, without those 1-1s, one Zelay's going to have a lot tougher time of being able to deal with all these one-health minions that are going to be charging right at his face. Yeah. And pretty safe bet to hold on to the value of the Glaive Zooka anyway, because he felt pretty goddamn confident that he was going to keep the a minion on the board that turn. So he gets his five in this turn with the Worgen Infiltrator. A smart trade to protect the high value minion on the board. It means if something like Muster comes down, he still has to poke that thing again, take three more damage to get rid of it. So. Pretty disgusting situation again. We're just seeing what good face hunter draws do to people, and this is something that we just haven't seen in the tournament meta for a decent amount of time because uh, the Grim Patron Warrior was really just keeping all these face hunters in check and kind of forcing them out of the format a little bit. Yeah, definitely Grim Patron Warrior was one of the best decks against the face hunter. Uh, Zelay had the warrior that got banned out that would have been able to do a lot of work against this face hunter, but with that warrior banned, it seems like he just doesn't have any answers in his lineup to a face hunter deck. Just looking at his hand now, like the, his hand is starting to do things now, but is there mm -hmm. enough time left in this game for him to get value out of all of these cards and square this up? Yeah, I don't know. it's mm. going to be really tricky to try and make it there. He's already all the way down to 13 health. He's starting to get into the range where the hunter just has to hero power him a few times, and then he's dead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from Zelay's perspective, you just have to hope that your, your hunter opponent is drawing the few bricks that are in his deck. You know, the Mad Scientist, the Haunted Creepers, the things that don't do immediate damage. And just race as hard as you can, but looking at 6-0's hand, it's anything but. Arcane Golem Quickshot is anything but bricks at this point. Well, Snake Trap's a brick, so he's got one brick in there, but... Yep. Uh, being a 5 health can't feel too comfortable. <laughs> he doesn't even need any more cards to finish the game. 6 can simply use the quick shot and the hero power to end Zelay next turn. Yeah, not the slightest care in the world given to ramping him into his mysterious challenger turn. It's like, go ahead, play your 6-6. Six, six. I'm just going to quick shot hero power you next turn and you're dead anyway, buddy. So. Yeah, good luck with your free mana crystal. You're <laughs> yeah. dead. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Uh, so 6-0 is going to consider a little bit here. Maybe he thinks the Coghammer gives him better odds overall of living, but we know any line he takes here is uh, not going to be good enough. Quick shot in hand is going to deal the 5 damage along with the hero power no matter what he does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think if oh, you're just trying to play the most powerful thing, I think you just simply drop the Mysterious Challenger, right? And then uh, trade the 5-5 five, five in and then go face. But uh, is there a way to wiggle in the cog hammer here to get more pressure on board, maybe? Maybe, like, if you can deal with the arcane golem without using the 5-5? Five five. Oh, it looks like that's what he's going to try and do. He's going to play redemption on it. And just sort of ignore the arcane golem just to try and make sure you can get 5 damage in. Right, I, I mean... Is he? I'm not sure. It, I think the arrow signaled it, but... Yeah, okay. Fair yeah. Enough. But anyway... Pretty, pretty academic. Zelay just trying to navigate without the perfect information that he was dead, what the best play was, but quick shot makes it all irrelevant and a very, very quick 2 0 lead there for 6 0. Yeah, Face Hunter is one of those decks that definitely counters the mid range, or I mean, the Secrets Paladin can kill them oftentimes before they're able to get the Mysterious Challenger down, even with a free mana crystal. <laughs> yep. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, we do. We have talked about how why Last Hero Standing has been brought back for this tournament and why Last Hero Standing, for some people, they feel is a lot better than Conquest. Obviously, no format is perfect. Um, we're seeing here one of the problems with Last Hero Standing, which is that one really strong deck can just steamroll an opponent and uh, a series can be over very quickly. And Zelay is staring down one of the quickest losses in this tournament so far. Let's see if he can battle back with his mid-range hunter against the face hunter of Sixo. Yeah, nice. definitely not a matchup he really wants to have. That's probably why he waited to queue at last, but yeah, it's definitely winnable. <laughs> and yet again, Worgen Infiltrator into thing that buffs Worgen Infiltrator. These draws yeah. from 6-0 are just pretty sick. Yeah, Zelay's not too much of a slouch either. He's got the, the Knife Juggler to try and initiate some early tempo, and he's got the Owl, which can oftentimes deal with most of the, uh, the Hunter 2 traps. Sure. Wait. Uh, Double Eaglehorn Bow, not very exciting. You'd never want to be trading in this matchup. 
So, because by the time you use Eagle Horn Bow to try and stabilize the board, you're usually dead. So, <laughs> it's not the greatest card in this matchup. And this is this is the kind of weird looking things that you kind of have to do sometimes when you're playing a, a higher value deck against Face Hunter. Just you know, sacrificing the coin and the knife juggler just to hope you get to trade with a Worgen Infiltrator. And obviously his plan was the next turn, as you said, Iron Beak Owl interacts with basically every two drop in the Hunter deck really favorably. So he's just going to plan to set up the one for one trade again the next turn. Um, but even that, even the coin knife juggler to trade with Worgen got denied by the quick shot off the top. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Zixo is going to continue protecting his minion and pushing face damage with it, holding the board control. Zelay has a pretty solid curve coming up, though, with Animal Companion into Piloted Shredder. He might be able to stabilize quicker, or quick enough to be able to withstand the face under pressure. He does. Uh, that Argent Horse Rider Abusive Sergeant in uh, Zixo's hand, though, is going to be crushing if the, this is a Misha oh, roll, yeah. though. Any Animal Companion roll really gets blown out by the Argent Horse Rider. Right. Maybe he's thinking about trying to play around that, and he puts the bow here to just trade. Um, but I guess we're just going to see exactly the same play anyway. Sixo is fine with not picking up an, an awesome trade with this Divine Shield. It's just going to do its job to get four into face, stick around on the board, Divine Shield in place, which makes it obviously like twice as difficult to remove. So decent chance of this getting in for another two next turn at least. Piloted Shredder coming down to try and fight the board. Hunter's Mark picked up into the hand. Not the greatest when all your opponent's minions already have one health. <laughs> no, not the most effective of cards. Um, he'll probably be wishing he could uh, swap decks with uh, with two beers at this point and get some of that Dread Scale action going on. Yeah, that could definitely help out here. But we do know he has Sludge Belchers in his deck, so maybe he can top deck a Sludge Belcher now that the Owl's been used and it could have some great impact on the game here. Sure, but he is down to 14 already. There's another two in play with the Lepanome, so he is at a maximum of 12 health. So we're back into that zone you talked about uh, in the last game where we can just press hero power a few times, and we're probably just going to end up winning this game. Yeah, Huffer, not the one you really want to see. Probably hoping for Misha, but at least it's proactive. You get to initiate the trade first. <laughs> Huffer against a board of three two ones, one of which has a divine shield. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't seem optimal. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, Zelay built his decks. They're all like uh, mid rangey, but a little bit slower than the mid rangey decks. And Zixo built his decks like the f the face decks, but built them a little bit faster than the traditional face decks. And we see these kind of different styles of. Uh, play and different ways of thinking about the meta colliding together here and one of them's working a lot better than the other. <laughs> that is most definitely true. So down to head. 10, there's another what, seven piling in this turn. He hasn't attacked mm -hmm. with anything else, right? Still the weapon charge to go as well. This game is over, ladies and gentlemen. There's no way coming back from this. Well, heal pot. Well, <laughs> sure. If he rips an anti kill bot off the top in his hunter deck, then maybe he can have a go. Nope, no such thing. And that is about as quick a 3 0 victory in a tournament as you will ever, ever see. Wow. I mean, that's pretty much the definition of a blowout, right? Yeah. Sixo just absolutely swept Zelay away there. And I mean, Zelay, that's kind of one of those losses where you just go, well, that happened. Yeah. Not really anything I could have done about that, unfortunately. It's a sad loss for Zelay, but Sixo is our first finalist of the HS Arena tournament. Uh, the final, of course, is going to be a best of seven, so all four decks, no ban. So we're definitely, you know, there's the option of seeing the face hunter again in the final. Uh, and he's going to play in the final against either Eloise or Two Beers. We talked about it all through today. Sixo looking very, very strong to take the whole thing far back. Yeah, definitely looking really solid. He's got a really strong lineup. He has uh, a lot of decks that work really well together to target the same thing, so that if one of his decks gets banned out, he still has a backup deck that can counter, so he doesn't end up in a situation like Zelay got ended up in here, where he just simply didn't have an answer to uh, Face Hunter because his only answer got banned out. So, is there anything we can say about Face Hunter there? It just showed why it is one of the better decks in this format. I mean, I think we've already talked for longer than that series lasted, <laughs> right? So there's not much else to cover. It's just three really great draws in three pretty favorable matchups already for the Hunter. 
Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, well, Worgen Infiltrator turn one in every game, I think, and then like perfect curves to follow up, damage when he needed it. That was just a really solid draw from Sixo, but he played it well. He rationed out his damage effectively, which is one of the key skills as a, as a face hunter player. And Zelay's slower, greedy builds of decks just had no answers to, to Worgen Infiltrators. Yeah. yeah, well, we're going to see Eloise and Two Beers in our second semifinal coming up in just a few minutes to find out who's going to face Sixo in our final. We'll see Zelay once more in our third place match as well uh, later on today. But we're going to go to a short break and when we come back, we're going to have our second semifinal Eloise versus Two Beers. <laughs> 